the slow walk No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up I don't ever slow up No, I don't take shit I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I don't Hey team, hope you're all doing well and having a great week of training. Today's topic is the long run 30% rule. And what this basically entails is if you are, say you're doing 50 miles a week, okay, you should never go more than 30, well at least the theory says you should never really go over 30% uh, of your weekly mileage during your long run. So if you're doing 50 miles a week, that means not going any further than 15 miles. Okay, so if you're doing say higher mileage and you're going like 120 kilometers, which is about 74 miles or so, you shouldn't do any further than a 36 kilometer long run while doing 120 kilometers a week or 74 miles a week. So again, it, it comes back to always focusing on what works best for you, okay? Because if you see other athletes or you hear about other athletes running like 130 miles a week or 100 miles a week and you're running 40 miles a week and you think that you can't match what these other runners are doing, uh, don't second guess yourself, okay? Because what works for some athletes is not going to work for you, okay? You know, I always talk about like faster, very paced long runs, okay? That particular strategy might not work best for you, Okay, I, I do mention that and I say, you know, if you want to run faster and you want to train smarter and not necessarily harder, you have to make sure that you're doing what works best for you in training. And those faster, very paced long runs are extremely difficult uh, to, to handle. Okay, you don't just start off doing that type of uh, those types of long runs. But again, when it comes to this long run 30% rule, I, I do feel like the, it is a generally um, correct mindset and philosophy to follow, okay? Um, if you're, you know, again, if you're doing uh, seven, around 70 miles a week, you shouldn't be doing more than a, a 21 mile long run during that 70 mile week of training, okay? So again, you, you also want to make sure too when in terms of the the long run you want to also make sure that you're providing uh, adequate time for your body to adapt okay so I would recommend running you know doing like a uh, an easy two easy runs prior to the start of a, of a, a long run that's going to challenge you that's really going to uh, test you to the limit both physically as well as mentally okay again Doing faster long runs, you should be doing those every other week, but first, you first need to build a strong aerobic base first, okay? I, I think that four to eight weeks of easy aerobic mileage where you're doing some strides, uh, five to six 50 meter strides during that, that buildup of, of four to eight weeks before you start doing faster, varied pace long runs is critical, critical. You're not gonna be able to do those, those types of long runs anyways um, unless you've built a strong aerobic base, unless you have that, that strong uh, fitness to go into those types of workouts. Uh, the long run, is, as you all know, is probably one of the most uh, important workouts that we do as middle to long distance runners. And there's so many different benefits that go in with uh, doing long runs. You know, some of them is, you know, increased stores, uh, energy stores in the muscle, uh, increased muscle strength, um, you know, your, your confidence is, is increased as well as you're building more mileage throughout the week and, and you're staying consistent with those long runs. You know, it improves your VO2 max, you know, your body's ability to, to handle higher, higher amounts of lactic acid. Um, and that doesn't, and, and it's not just the faster very paced long runs that, that help us do this, um, but also long runs that are long, slow, and easy where you're spending a lot of time on your feet. You know, your ability to, to utilize fat on a cellular level is also enhanced by doing long runs as well. Okay, so you have to really be smart about what you're doing. And I think the long run 30% rule is something you need to keep in mind. Um, I don't think for most runners going over the marathon distance is going to help you any more necessarily than running say 18 to 20 miles. Okay, but again, I think every once in a while, if you really, if you do want to challenge yourself, doing a, a long run out to around 50K, 
And again, this is that's for very advanced runners that really want to challenge and want to go out 30, 31 miles to, to again to get that to get the marathon distance to feel easier for them and, and to not feel such of a challenge. If you do that every once in a while, maybe like during a, a five to six month buildup, you do two thirty one. I think that's going to definitely help your confidence and to know that, hey, I've went out 31 miles, I can go 26 miles in this race, okay? But if you do that consistently over and over, you're gonna get very fatigued, you're gonna get very tired, and uh, you're asking way too much out of yourself. So I wouldn't recommend doing it um, often, but again, I think if, you're, if you do that during a five to six month buildup, um, about one to two times, do a, do a long, long run, okay? And, I'm, and when I'm talking about a 50K long run, I'm not saying doing a very paced long run. I'm talking 50K, but just long, slow, and easy, and relax, and get that time on your feet, and go longer than the marathon distance. Make sure, absolutely make sure that you are hydrating during that long run, okay? Drop your water bottles out. I've made that mistake myself uh, as a long distance runner. Thinking that, um, especially as it get hot as it, during the summer months as we're in right now, most of you understand this. Um, don't go out there during those long runs without water, without any type of electrolyte. Don't run your long run without having fluid on the course. Okay, most of you uh, don't have uh, somebody to to hand you water. Uh, that, or to ride a bike next to you. So maybe you do, maybe you have a family member, maybe a spouse or girlfriend, boyfriend that, that can help you do that. Uh, but most of us don't have the, the luxury of somebody that wants to do that, that wants to go out there and, and, and ride their bike next to us or ride their car next to us. You see a lot of these, uh, these huge camps of, of Kenyans and other Europeans that are, that are on you know, Sweat Elite and these other uh, YouTube channels that have that luxury. Okay, but most of us that are training on our own don't have that. So during your long runs, do not make the mistake of not hydrating during your long runs. I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that most of us make because when when you wait until you're dehydrated, you've you've made a mistake because it's going to take you several days to rehydrate. You know, and I think there's um, there's definitely uh, companies out there, I would recommend definitely Hoist, which is, I'll, I'll leave a link below uh, to, to the, the Hoist drink that I definitely, that I drink myself. It is clinically proven uh, to hydrate you 110% better than water, okay? Uh, so I, I would highly recommend getting some Hoist and drinking that during your long runs, drop them, drop the water bottles out with hoist or in a combination of both water and hoist throughout that long run and get used to that. The long run 30% rule, as I mentioned before, is definitely a, a good recommendation. If you're one of those athletes that uh, is running maybe 110 miles uh, a week, you're running much, much higher, you know, again, no further than a th than 33 miles during that long run. Again, you're not going to be running 30. Most athletes aren't going to be running 33 miles during their long run. But again, no further than 30%. Okay, usually 25 to 30% uh, is the is is the accurate uh, is a right around where you want to be thinking about, and more toward around 20 to 25% for most athletes. Okay, so again, it's again with with training, it's about training smarter, not harder. Uh, it's not about the volume you're doing, but what is the quality of the training you're doing? What are you doing after the track sessions? What are you doing after the road workouts are completed? Are you getting enough sleep? Are you hydrating well? Are you taking in enough protein? Are you focusing on foods that are high in iron uh, that's, so that you ensure that you, you don't run low on fer your ferritin? Okay, if you run low on ferritin, your body's ability to transport oxygen throughout the body is dismal. Okay, you, you can have a high amount of, of, of drive and motivation and you're not going to perform well because, again, your body's ability to, to, to transport that oxygen and to transport oxygen throughout your body effectively is, is simply not there because you're running low on that. And most athletes don't know a lot about that. Okay, so Dr. Joe V. Hill, uh, one of the top distance running coaches known worldwide as well as a world-renowned exercise physiologist says to take 
one teaspoon of liquid ferrosol, which is liquid iron, um, with some orange juice, eight ounces of orange juice, with a 250 milligram or higher uh, vitamin C tablet each day for about a month to a month and a half until you get those ferritin levels higher. So I hope this video is helpful for all of you that are thinking about and wondering about the, the long run 30% rule and, and what it entails. Again, we've discussed some of the, the benefits of uh, what you get during those long runs, but also paying attention to your recovery, okay, and making and paying attention, equal attention to your nutrition and your hydration during those long runs. Don't go out there and not drop your water bottles out every three miles, every five kilometers during your long run route. Make sure you're drinking, especially during these hotter, uh, warmer months, summer months. Okay, so thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you to all my new subscribers, all to my current subscribers who's been who've been with me throughout this uh, time I've been making videos on YouTube. Definitely check out the resources below these videos if you want to take your running to the next level. There's a lot of uh, resources not only for nutrition but also for training and also for mindset as well. So thank you so much, and I'll talk to you all in the next video.